Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Amelia Island car auction held by RM Sotheby's. This prestigious classic car event had sales topping over 70 million US dollars. From the iconic Alfa Romeos, to the sleek and stylish Maseratis, from the legendary Ferraris, to the classic Jaguars, we're gonna feature them all. So stick around and get ready for the ride of a lifetime. This is the Amelia Island Car Auction, and it's gonna be epic. So here are all the Miami supercars that RM Sotheby's had on offer at this auction. Front and center, this absolutely astonishing 2010 Pacani Zonda R Revolution that sold for 5.34 million US dollars. So what are we looking at? This is really a track day only special that Pagani took way further than any racing regulations to make the ultimate track day toy. They only made 10 of these in between 2009 and 2011. And this one was returned back to the factory in 2014 for the revolution package. This includes a host of aerodynamic upgrades, including the wind deflectors up front, a huge vertical stabilizer wing on the rear bonnet and active DRS on the rear wing that's controlled by a button on the steering wheel. Also in the package are our new Brembo CCM R brake, so that was updated as well. So how capable does that make this? Well, it still holds the fastest non-series production-based gasoline car record around the legendary Nordberg ring Nordschleife, so that's pretty impressive. And we're just gonna zoom in on it here. So these are really the ultimate Zondas made with a six liter V12 engine with 780 horsepower and a six speed sequential transaxle. So here we are zooming in, we can have a look at the wonderful carbon fiber work done at Pagani. And this car is a really interesting contrast between the satin carbon fiber and the gloss carbon fiber. It just looks so spectacular too with the golden stripes and the magnesium wheels. It really is a thing of beauty. So what I thought was pretty interesting about this purchase was that the next potential owner was able to participate in what Pagani calls a Art in Pista program. It's a series of five track day experiences. There's going to be four events in the USA, one, no, four events in Europe, sorry, and one in the USA that bring together the Pagani Zonda R and Waira R drivers to coach them and race them on the track. So if this is the kind of thing you want to hear screaming at 10,000 RPM down a track, be sure to check out the Art and Pista program by Pagani. Next, we're gonna step back 20 years and look at this 1991 Jaguar Sport XJR15 that sold for 1.27 million. Now this has to be the best version in the world. It only has 153 miles from new because its first Asian owner kept it in their collection and didn't use it. So what we're looking at here is the original Meridius blue metallic paint over top of the Kevlar, carbon Kevlar bodywork. Now, what are we looking at? This is a supercar that was made by Tom Walk and Shaw Racing. They were responsible for the Group C Jaguars, the XGR9 that dominated Le Mans. Highly successful program. So that was the motivation for these XGR 15s. You can see the carbon Kevlar weave there in the paint, sign of an original car. If you put one coat of clear over that, it would ruin that finish instantly. So yeah, I think there's a lot of parallels with this and the McLaren F1. They kind of share the same carbon Kevlar monocoque design, exterior styling by Peter Stevens, but they only made just, a ha just, a, just over 50 examples of the XJR15. I think there were 27 of those in this road going trim like we see here in these three piece Oz Racing wheels. The rest were used for a one make race series called the Jaguar Intercontinental Challenge, which was fun. It was kind of like a celebrity race car drivers. And yeah, overall a real stunning showpiece. 1.27 has to be the top of the market for these cars.
Now we're gonna move on to classic cars and my pick of the auction, it's this 1955 Alfa Romeo 1900C Super Sprint Zagato. So why is this my pick? Well, it sold for 775,000, but it raced the 1955 Mille Amelia. It is gorgeous Zagato coachwork. I just love the livery with the black wire wheels and the stripe down the side. And this car has tons of original details that we'll get into. Now Zagato built 39 Berlinettas on the 1900C platform, and they all shared the same sculpted nose with the bulged hood to clear the Weber carburetors and the two air intakes on either side of the grill with the integrated lights. But no two cars are the same. They all have their unique and individual identity, and that's why I love this series so much. So in 1955, Dr. Vincenzo Fornasari bought this car for his son to race the 1955 Mille Amelia. Now the car was quite successful. It finished 38th overall and 11th in class, wearing race number 188. So if you look up 1955 Mille Amelia, Alfa Romeo 188, it'll come up with this car, but it looks slightly different because during its first restoration, this was, was converted to that double bubble roof you see. And that was an iconic Alfa Romeo trait. And I guess the owner wanted to mimic that iconic trait, even though the car never raced with it in period. So we're gonna look at this car inside. Can definitely see it's very Spartan with those bucket racing seats, very Zagato-like in there. And that's really interesting trim that goes all the way around. Yeah, as I said, I just love those black wire wheels and the stripe going down the side of the car. Now we're gonna get into the details here, I believe. We're gonna start seeing, look, that the that this car's showing its age, it's not perfect. It's the kind of car you could just get in and drive down the road with really no concerns because it isn't a perfect showpiece. And here's some of these original details I was talking about, this original aluminum trim. Looks like it's been with the car since 1955 and that's what I love. So here you are, we're getting a look inside at the inline four cylinder engine. It is really a work of art. Cast iron block, two liter, twin overhead camshaft, producing well over 120 horsepower, maybe 130, 140 with that, with those Webers in there. Now here we are looking at the other side, can see the downdraft Webers, that big bulge in the hood is necessary to clear those huge intake trumpets. Yeah, what a wonderful car. Great purchase at 775,000. Here we are inching towards one of my favorite 1962 E-types. It's this Series 1 3.8 liter Roadster that has a color combination to die for, and that's opalescent bronze with a tan interior. And the hue chosen by the Restorers Classic Showcase was just perfect. It's the perfect hue of gold for that interior. You'll, you'll see when we get closer. So yeah, as I said, in the early 2000s, Classic Showcase of Oceanside, California did the full nut and bolt rotisserie restoration on this car. And they are absolute experts at refinishing and working with reproduction pieces and making them coalesce into a successful car. You see the way everything fits here. It is just so wonderful. And I'm a huge fan of the upholstery on this E-Type. See, super clean. You can see the polished steering wheel, the new aluminum in there coalescing nicely with all the pieces. The beautiful canvas boot cover, hinges painted on the trunk. Classic showcase is seriously impressive. You can see the bumpers are always lined up on a classic showcase vehicle. You look down the side of it, the doors are perfectly sculpted into the fenders. Here we can see the leading edge of the door gap looking perfect. The bonnet to firewall gap looking perfect. The welded louvers for the early car looking really nice. And get a little closer here, get a sense of how nice that metallic base is sprayed on. And the chrome and the way everything's fitted is just so wonderful. So beyond the wonderful restoration, this car actually has a really good provenance. It's an original California car with a JTAG. We'll see that in the engine bay and it retains its matching numbers, engine, cylinder head and body. So that really is the restoration dream, getting a rust free California car, completely matching numbers and having it restored by one of the best in the business classic showcase of Oceanside, California. Time for the engine bay. 
And this is one spectacularly prepared car. Look how nice the finish is underneath the bonnet. It looks better than the top side of my car, that's for sure. And we're gonna scroll down here to the chassis tag and we can just get a glimpse, I think, of the J tag down there. It says J62, a small silver strip. And that was a number, a prefix that California put on the registration. So a lot of this one may have originally started with the California registration J62 and then the chassis number. On the other side here, so nice, porcelain manifolds, beautifully painted pumpkin orange cylinder head. I love the aluminum shining back at me there. All the suspension done up in cadmium. I see black oxide bolts. It is really a nice and clean space to work in. What a dream car to work on. You will not get dirty working on this thing. And I just love the opalescent bronze poking out here and there, the engine subframes. It's such a seductive color. Oh, look how clean it is around the wheel well area. Yeah, that's pretty spectacular. A, a wonderful show car that sold for $224,000. Now next to the Jaguar was this beautiful 1962 Aston Martin DB4 Series 4 with the special series engine and we'll get into that. So what are we looking at? This is a Caribbean Pearl over black leather upholstery car and this is as it was delivered from the factory including options like overdrive, chrome wire wheels, power windows, Armstrong shock absorbers, an oil cooler, limited slip differential, and 3.77 to one gear ratio. That's a, that's a lot of options. I'm gonna guess some of those were standard options because I've never seen a DB4 with anything other than wire wheels. So what we see here is the result of a painstakingly accurate restoration by Aston Martin Works in Newport Pagnell, UK. And there's that beautiful Series 4 grill in there, looking really spectacular. So what really sets this car apart is this engine. Only 97 left-hand DB4s came with this triple SU setup, triple HD8 carburetors with a balance tube. And I think that really contributed to its selling price of 775,000 US dollars. And here we can just see the plaque there that confirms it was restored by the factory. So let's keep to the Aston Martin theme, but really kick it up a notch with this DB5 Vantage convertible. So yes, this is the drop top version of James Bond's car, but to Vantage specifications. So it has covered headlights, it has more horsepower. I think the cylinder head had larger ports fed by triple Weber carburetors and an airbox, just like the DB4 GT race car. So for a long time, this toured the United States in right-hand drive, and it was painted bright red until about 2005, and then it was repainted this deep carriage green, that's the original color, and converted to left-hand drive for North American driving. And yeah, the tan interior just looks fabulous. The chrome, everything about this car, I believe it's an award winner. And that's why it sold for $1.5 million. That's a big sum, but these Aston Martins are exceedingly rare. As I said, only one of seven in the world. Yeah, so beautiful chrome on Vredestine tires. And there's that Vantage tag. That's what costs so much. My friend Godfrey said you have to check out this 1969 Ferrari. So let's have a look at this 365 GTB4, better known as the Daytona. What makes this one particularly special is it's one of the early examples with the plexiglass nose. Now I think these cars are somewhat undervalued as the early versions here were considerably lighter and more powerful than the later versions which had to conform to emissions and safety regulations coming out of the USA. Now this specific car is car number 82. It was delivered in white with a red interior and shown at the 1969 Canadian Automobile Show. But for most of its life, it's lived this black on black guys we see here. So at the auction, this sold for $582,000, which is pretty good value considering that some of the later Daytonas, the slower ones are worth more. So here we go, we can have a close look at the plexiglass front end of these things. And this wasn't allowed under US regulation. In 1971, they converted the design to a pop-up design and they changed the lights and the bumpers and these early cars just have so much better presence and performance than the ones that came afterward. 
So here we are, we're gonna have a look inside and those are the iconic Daytona seats. They've co been copied many, many times by later Ferraris. And I believe even if you went to Ferrari now and you said, look, I want my car to have Daytona inserts in the seats, they probably would oblige. So yeah, what an amazing car. Thanks for the tip, Godfrey. Again, it sold for $582,000. Coming now into view is one of the most beautiful sports racing cars of all time. So this was Maserati's 1953 contender for the World Sports Car Championship, and they called this the A6 GCS 53. So this is a lightweight, all aluminum spider designed by Fantuzzi, and I just love the flowing lines of this, the side exhaust, the drilled drum brakes there, the large competition lace wire wheels, the stance of the car, everything about this is just so achingly beautiful. It's one of the very best designs ever to come from Italy. Looking really, really good in red, I might say as well. Now this is the 11th car of about 50 examples produced and it was used by Maserati as a factory demonstrator in the USA. In fact, the legendary Juan Manuel Fangio drove this around the Thompson Speedway in Connecticut to the media and potential clients to promote Maserati racing in America. Now after that, it was purchased privately by Donald McNaught of Cranford, New Jersey. He entered it in the 1954 12 hours of Sebring, but after 66 laps, a minor crash forced an early retirement. Now after Sebring, the car was used quite a lot in SCCA racing. It was raced well into the 60s. At that time, the whole drivetrain was lost. It was instead replaced with a V8, automatic transmission, and American differential. And in the last 20 years, this car has been brought back to its original specification with an original type engine, transmission, and rear end. And so that, I don't really know how much that affects value, but this still sold at Amelia Island for $2.59 million. Now here we are, we're having a look at this gorgeous Maserati engine. What we're looking at is a two liter cast iron block with a lightweight dual overhead cam aluminum cylinder head. I can see the twin spark ignition in there as well and the beautiful exhaust manifolds. Really automotive jewelry when it comes down to it. Now on the other side here, we have some Weber carburetors. They're three Weber 40 DCO3s. And this whole package produced about 170 horsepower, which was more than enough for this small little Italian race car. Now we're gonna stay with the Maserati theme, but look at the successor that came before the car we just saw, this being the 1950 Maserati A6 GCS 2000. Now RM reports that only 14 or 15 examples of this sports car were built for the early 1950 sports car season. And this is really what Maserati's contender looked like before it got the all enveloping car in 1953 and 54. So this car has a great history. It was delivered brand new with pictures surviving in yellow paint with a green interior, believe it or not, to the Automobile Club of Brazil. And it has some racing history in Brazil up until about 1972 when it was discovered by Colin Crabb and then returned to England. I think the body was just too tatty. So the bodywork we see here is all new but he was able to retain a lot of the mechanical features of the car. And one really interesting feature is that this car was in period delivered back to Maserati in 1952. The original cylinder head was removed and a dual overhead cam component was put in, a single ignition version that was the first recorded use of a dual overhead cam engine in Maserati history. So I think that's really special, or at least in Maserati sports car history. 
There was no indication at Amelia Island that this car retained its original engine, transmission, and rear end, but it did sell for a million dollars at the event. So here we are getting a good look at that two liter dual overhead cam engine. And I think it's really neat how we're seeing the prototype engine for the 1953 car we featured a little earlier. So I would imagine a lot of the similar specifications. I see the same Webers, the same exhaust manifolds. So definitely looking at a probably maybe just under 170 horsepower that the 1953 cars made and looking at this hood here i always like to look at areas like this it definitely looks like a remanufactured unit maybe it was retaining some of the original clips from the car but yeah what a stunning showpiece a really unique and rare part of maserati history Now next, we're gonna go outside my wheelhouse slightly and look at this pre-war Packard with this really beautiful tritone paintwork and these wood light headlamps, these chrome disc wheels that really make this really remarkable Art Deco package. So this is a 1930 Packard 745 Deluxe 8. Now the Deluxe 8 was the top of the line Packard in 1930, riding on the longest available 145 inch wheelbase chassis. A big straight eight engine in there that was super smooth, produced lots of torque and 105 brake horsepower. Now here they are the chrome wheels, these dished wheels. They were very large with the white walls and they just really stood out and fit with the Art Deco character of the rest of the car. So getting an overall look, we can see the convertible Victoria body, which was fitted to this car. One of the most desirable produced by Waterhouse of Webster, Massachusetts. These, is a, these have a dip down at the rear of the coach work. And that was to accommodate the fully collapsing soft top frame. And as well, Waterhouse was particular in building the car and the body around the frame so it had a low sleek speedster character unlike other bodies which rode more high and on the top like a town car. So yeah, just having a look at the details here, I love the grill over the radiator, this big mascot, uh, really showing off flamboyant Art Deco design and really painted beautifully inside. The restoration on this car was impeccable. It was restored by Ray Belsito back to its original color. So yeah, these are the original colors, believe it or not. Bright red interior, yeah, really showing off the bright and vibrant colors of the 1930s, which we really don't see with a lot of other cars. At the back here, yeah, look at this, it's tan lime green and orange pretty unbelievable and these really neat bumpers with integrated lights just all the details of this car the painted bumper irons everything about it was really showpiece let me look at these running boards with this hardwood just done so beautifully this must have been an expensive car to restore and there it is the super smooth eight cylinder engine now at the auction this fetched six hundred thirty seven thousand five hundred dollars Now let's move forward four years and have a look at this 1934 Packard 12 Series 1106. What makes this car particularly special is this sport coupe bodywork that was penned by LeBaron and interpreted and made at Packard's own facility. LeBaron was really drawing inspiration from the motor show circuits in Europe. Cars like the 540K Mercedes Autobahn Courier, the Bugatti Atlantics, this sweeping fastback design, but here LeBaron really interprets it in an American way with the running boards and the fabric top, and there's so many unique and individual design details when you have a look at this car up close. So this particular car was the first of four made in this body style, and it was because of that, it has very unique details compared to the other cars. And it also has the distinction of being the 1934 New York Auto Show car. So what can I say? This really is one of the most desirable Packards in the world. Unfortunately, at the auction, it failed to meet its reserve, but RM Sotheby still have it for sale with an asking price of $2.2 million. Here we are progressing towards one of the most unusual cars from 1934, this being the Czechoslovakian Tatra T77. So the most remarkable aspect of this car is this profile design, the super long fastback, 
four-door sedan with a wraparound three-piece windscreen. And we have a look up front here, very characteristic design with inset front headlights. This was copied by Porsche for the Volkswagen. And the result of all these unusual lines is from a gentleman by the name of Paul Geray. He worked in Germany adapting aircraft principles, streamlined aircraft principles to the automotive sphere. Now this car is pretty special. It's the ninth T77 ever made and there are only five known to survive. So this is a very rare sight. These did not survive. And if we have a close look there in the back, we get an indication of what's going on. There's a big scoop up near the roof there that feeds this air-cooled V8 that we're gonna have a look at shortly. And here it is, the big rear hatch is open, revealing a three liter air-cooled V8. So again, really oddball design, almost as oddball as the exterior design. So down below there are two belts that feed two turbines that blow on these um, cylinder blocks that have all these fins on them. And at the top here, we can see a single, looks like a downdraft carburetor of some sort. There's a big unusual rocker system in there. I just see a single spark ignition system. And again, those belts which drive those turbines and cool the whole car. So what we see here is the result of a 10 year million dollar restoration. And it really shows just looking at the outside and inside finishes, the car is truly spectacular. So at the sale, Arm Sotheby's realized 390,000 US dollars. Next to the Tatra was this absolutely gorgeous 1959 Lancia Flaminia Sport Series 1 and what makes this special is it's one of only 99 that have bodies by Zagato. Zagato are known for their lightweight racing bodies like the Alfa Romeo we saw earlier. Now this car has benefited from a three-year restoration from the leading experts in California and it was consequently shown at Pebble Beach and when we have a look inside here we'll see how wonderfully prepared this car is. I love this dashboard with the painted speedometer area and the upholstered area on the right hand side in front of the passenger. Then as we swing around we see these really beautiful lightweight sport seats and door panels trim to perfection and then we can see the engine bay here as well so this is the two and a half liter double overhead camshaft v6 that's made it to a four-speed transaxle now these cars have a really dramatic almost fastback profile and i kind of like that double bubble roof as well and that's i think what makes them so desirable now this one retains its matching numbers engine transaxle and body and it's accompanied by a certificate of origin from lancia and that's why it sold for 550,000 555,000 sorry at the auction Now staying with the Lancia theme, let's have a look at this pre-war 1936 Astura Series 3. This car is very special because it won the Pell Beach Concourse outright best of show in 2016. And that's really because it has this special bodywork known as the Tipo Boca by Pininfarina. Now this is one of the very first Pininfarina body styles built for the Boca brothers who were dealers of Lancia in Italy and they had the vision to make this incredible cabriolet with a fold down window, beautiful trim and a hydraulically actuated reclining top. So one of the very most uh, prestigious cars to come from Italy. Now here we're gonna have a look at that trim and when I talked to Richard Mattei who had this car restored, he said this was the hardest part of the restoration, getting this etching right going down the side of the car and really wonderful inside. You can see the way maybe the upholstery is wrapped on those seats. The dashboard layout is just simply superb. There it is. This is the Pininfarina Speciale and it sold for $2.2 million. So here's a car a little closer to my heart. It's a 1956 Austin Healey 100M. Now this is one of just 640 factory produced competition versions of the 100M. And what that means is it came with that louvered bonnet, 
sometimes with a leather strap, larger carburetors with a cold air intake, and a high lift camshaft for a slight increase in power. Now what's so remarkable about this car is its color scheme. It has Florida green paintwork with ivory coves. And this Florida green, yes, it is a factory color and it was available on all the early Heelys. And it's really one of the more unique hues that was available in the range, if not the most unique hue. So there it is, that's the badge. That's the indicator that yes, this is a factory 100M. Um, and we got a beautiful presentation here. I see Lucas PL lights, looks like original front grill and the spotlights, the beading, everything's done so wonderfully. And there's that interior, black with white piping. I love this painted dashboard, the wooden wheel. It's such a quintessential British sports car with that folded down window. We got this, the louvered bonnet, the leather strap. Yeah, this is just simply a wonderful presentation. So yeah, this car with its matching numbers, chassis, engine, and body, as well as color scheme, sold for $184,800 at the sale. Okay, I saved the best for last. Yep, this is a 1959 Ferrari 250 GT long wheelbase California Spider. This is the 17 of 50 long wheelbase California Spiders. And I actually do like the longer wheelbase car. It just has this elegance. Look at the lines in front of us here with that swept back wind, front windshield. Just so incredible. Now this car was originally finished in a medium blue with beige interior and it had competition features in the engine bay like velocity stacks and a cold air box. So pretty desirable from a specification standpoint. Now what we see here is the result of a 2012 restoration that finished it in Amarato with saddle interior, which we can see right here. Now, after this restoration was done, it was shown all over the world and got many accolades. It won the Salon Privé Concourse. It was displayed at Concorso Villa de Est, the Quail, and got platinum at the Cavalino Classic. So a very well awarded car that speaks for the quality of the restoration done here. Now at the sale, RM Sotheby's failed to sell this car for nine to $11 million estimate, but they did sell the car afterwards. So I'm gonna guess in and around the $10 million range. So yeah, not a cheap car, but a very, very exciting and special for our 250 California Spider. And that's a wrap for the RM Sotheby's Amelia Island Classic Car Auction. I'm thrilled to report that this year's auction was an overwhelming success with a total of $7 million worth of classic cars finding new homes. It really was an exciting and unforgettable event filled with the rarest and most desirable vehicles on offer. So let me know what you think. As always, I love to hear from everybody in the comments below. Thanks for watching, everybody. See you later. Bye-bye.